Hello everyone, and welcome once again to Caleb Likes Books. Today I have another Star Wars book review for you, and that is for the next entry, the second entry in the A.C. Crispin Han Solo trilogy, which is The Hut Gambit. Um, as I said, this is the second book in the Han Solo trilogy. I recently read and reviewed the first book in the trilogy, so go check that out if you have not seen it. Uh, if you want my very basic thoughts before I talk about this one, I really, really enjoyed the first book. I thought it was fantastic. Um, great job with Han and all the other characters, interesting plot, all of that stuff, some interesting themes even as well that I enjoyed. Um, so I was very excited to go into this one uh, and curious what I would think of it. And I think this one may be even better. Um, I, I consider them both around the same level, but I think uh, if you were talking about in terms of uh, you know which one I had more positives with and less negatives, this one I think uh, has even fewer issues with it uh, for me than the first book did. And the first book didn't even have that many issues for me. So I really did enjoy this one a lot. So to get started talking about it, some positives. Uh, basically, most things that I enjoyed in the first book are also present here. Um, Han Solo, of course, kind of to, to talk about first, because this is the Han Solo trilogy after all. Um, Han Solo is excellent in this book once again. Um, he's a little bit different than he was in the first book. The first book, he was... Uh, uh, perhaps a bit less jaded than he was in, in uh, for example, A New Hope. Um, he definitely has a little bit more of that uh, hardened, jaded kind of feel to him in this book. Uh, he's not quite as optimistic, and uh, he's still, you know, good-natured at his core, but he definitely in this book is a lot more into the smuggling, the less legal side of things, which he, he still participated in in the first book, but in the first book he felt more like he was really, you know, a good guy trying to do the right thing. Whereas in this one he's very much more, you know, he still tries to help people sometimes, but he's much more kind of in it for himself, I think, um, and definitely is not as, you know, kind of the optimistic side of him that you see in the first book. Um, definitely a, a strong character progression for him uh, from the first book into this one. Um, and then in addition to that, you also get other side characters who are familiar. You get Chewbacca, who is by Han's side throughout all of this book. Um, he wasn't present at all in the first book, um, and the first book ended with Han just about to start going to the Imperial Academy, and this book takes place a short time, I think, after he has left the Imperial Academy. Um, I don't know if it's exactly how long after it is, but basically the, you get all of that section skipped between these two books, which was a little bit of a shame. I don't know if it, that period of time is covered in any other Star Wars media. If it is, let me know down in the comments. Um, I would have liked to see that in this trilogy, but this takes place after that. Um, so it is a little bit after the first book. I think it's about five years later. Um, but in that time, uh, he has befriended Chewbacca, and Chewbacca is, you know, his, uh, his partner throughout this book. And Chewbacca was great, as always. I always enjoy Chewbacca. Um, you also had some other characters. A couple of characters from the first book uh, reappear in this book. Not majorly. Uh, they do influence some aspects of the plot, but they are not major characters. Uh, I'm not going to spoil who exactly it is, um, but they are interesting in this book as well. Um, you also have some other characters, some familiar faces from the movies. For example, Lando Calrissian is introduced to Han Solo in this book, as well as Boba Fett. Um, and both of them were great. I really enjoyed Lando especially because uh, there were a lot of tie-ins to the L. Neil Smith uh, Lando Calrissian Adventures trilogy in this book. And even though I don't love that trilogy, um, it was nice to get some references to that, um, which I will, again, not spoil because I think they're a lot of fun to discover yourself if you have read those books before. Um, but I really enjoyed those references. Um, but yeah, Lando was really good. Boba Fett was really good. He, again, is not majorly a part of this book. He basically is only in, I think, a handful of chapters, um, but he's enjoyable in this book. You also get some other side characters. Um, you get a couple of Imperial characters in here. You get some Hut characters because the plot of this book essentially is that Han Solo is beginning to work with the Huts. Um, you know, obviously in the original trilogy, he has some history with Jabba the Hutt, um, and so that uh, history is begun in this book, basically. 
Um, and I really enjoyed his interactions with the huts. They're very interesting. You get some good insight into their culture, um, into uh, a few different characters, a few different hut characters, which was interesting. And I just enjoyed his interactions with them, seeing him starting to build that rapport with the huts um, and all that stuff. It was really interesting. Um, as well as some of the hot politics that was going on was also really cool. Um, to move away from characters now, uh, some other stuff I really enjoyed the, in this book was the plot. As I mentioned, it's basically the, the general gist of the plot is that Han is starting to work with the Huts, so he takes on some jobs for them and things like that. Um, in addition to that, he also has a bounty on his head, which is why Boba Fett is involved in this book. And then you also have um, the Empire, who is basically coming to uh, attack Nal Hutta and Nar Shadda, which Nal Hutta is the home planet of the Huts, and Nar Shadda is one of the most prevalent uh, smuggling and uh, kind of illegal activity hubs within the galaxy, um, which is a significant portion of this book takes place on those two planets. Um, or I think technically uh, Nar Shaddaa is a moon, but whatever. Um, it, it might be a planet, I can't remember. Um, I think it's a moon though. Um, but a significant portion of the book takes place on those planets, so it was really cool to get some more of those planets. Um, I would really love to see some more of them. I, I hope they appear frequently in some other Star Wars books, because uh, I haven't seen them a whole lot outside of a couple of the video games and maybe a couple of the books. So I, I really hope to see some more of those planets in the future um, as I continue reading more Star Wars books. But uh, that's basically the general plot of this book, which was really interesting. Um, I really enjoyed, again, seeing Han interact with the Huts, building his relationship with them, also dealing with the bounty stuff, and then also as they learn that the Empire is going to be attacking uh, all these places, you know, these two planets, um, and with Han having developed a very strong relationship with both the Huts and the smugglers on Nar Shadda, um, trying to kind of juggle that and figure out how to make that not turn out terribly uh, was really interesting, and I really enjoyed it a lot. Um, some other stuff I, again, really enjoyed. Uh, some of the stuff in that was in the first book, there was some good action in here. Um, there is a big action scene towards the end of this book, kind of similar to uh, there was a big action scene in the first book as well, though it uh, took place much earlier than the one in this book does. Um, but there's some good action in here. There's some good references to other stories. One of the things I've enjoyed about these two books so far is how they can kind of reference future events in some ways uh, because they're prequels. So you have, uh, you know, Han will make some comment about something uh, like, uh, for example, they bring up the fact that, you know, you could, you know, fight against the Empire. And he's like, who would do that? Uh, you know, of course, keeping in mind the events of the original trilogy, you know, the irony there is is funny. Uh, and there's a lot of stuff like that in these books. Lots of references to both uh, events in the future as well as in the past. Uh, like I said, even with Lando referencing stuff from the Lando Carissian adventures and all kinds of things like that. So there's a lot of fun stuff like that in this book as well. So that just about wraps up my positives. Now to talk about negatives, which I only have one very small thing to really talk about in terms of negatives with this book because I really did love this book a whole lot overall. Uh, the only thing that really let me down about it is actually the ending. Um, as I said, there's a big action scene at the end of this book, and even though I did enjoy that action scene and I really enjoyed the build-up to it, especially as they were trying to plan out how they were going to handle that, um, the actual action scene itself uh, felt a little underwhelming to me. Um, it was still good, you know, it was an enjoyable action scene, um, but I felt like it didn't live up to the expectations that I had for it given all of the build-up that it had. Um, but really, that's the only issue that I really had with this book. I think otherwise it was really fantastic. Um, so yeah, overall, this was definitely a great read, even better maybe than the first book. Again, it's kind of hard for me to say which one I liked better, but in terms of, you know, how much negatives I have to say about each of them, my only negative with this book is basically a nitpick about what is essentially one or two chapters. Whereas uh, the first book, I didn't have that many negative points to speak of either, but I feel like they were slightly more major than for this book. So I think this one may very well be uh, the better book of the two. I'm curious to see how the third book will stack up against the, third, uh, the first two.
So definitely would recommend giving this one a read as well as the first book if you have not before. As far as a rating out of 10 that I would give this book, I think I would give it a 9.5 out of 10, uh, which is slightly higher than the score I gave the Paradise Snore, uh, Paradise Snore, the Paradise Snare, uh, which I believe I gave a 9. So I really enjoyed that a lot. Um, and I really enjoyed this a lot and even slightly more. So that is pretty much it for my review. So let me know down in the comments if you have read The Hut Gambit as well as the rest of the Han Solo trilogy and what you thought of all of these books and especially this one. I've heard a couple of people say that uh, this may be their favorite in the trilogy um, and I, I don't know of course how the third one is going to turn out for me but I would not be surprised if this ends up being my favorite of the three. Let me know down in the comments if that's the case for you as well or if you have a different favorite out of the three which one that is um, and all that stuff. So uh, look forward to my review of the third book coming very soon. I'm going to be reading it next, um, so my review for that will be out uh, soon. So that is pretty much it for this video, so thank you all for watching, and I will see you guys next time.